Welcome back. In the next few lectures, we are going to walk through the process of deploying some resources in Azure using PowerShell rather than the uh, portal. If you're going to do a lot of work in Azure, uh, you're going to have to learn how to use PowerShell uh, quite a bit. Um, the PowerShell module uh, is used to create all kinds of Azure resources and to manage all kinds of Azure resources. So it behooves you to learn this. Uh, so we'll walk through some of the basics here uh, in this lecture and in the next one or two uh, as we walk through the process of deploying a virtual network, which we're going to do in this lecture, and then deploying a uh, virtual machine in a, a subsequent lecture. So in this lecture, let's look at what's required to deploy uh, an actual virtual network using PowerShell. As you can see on the screen here, I have my PowerShell window open. In the previous lecture, we went through and actually logged into Azure. So I'm already logged into my Azure account in this session. So I'm not going to go through that again. If you need a refresher for logging into Azure through PowerShell, revisit the previous lecture and it'll walk you through the process of doing that. So at this point, we've logged in and instead of using the existing resource group that we used previously, uh, we're going to actually walk through the entire process uh, from scratch uh, using PowerShell. So in this lecture, we're going to create a new resource group and we're going to create some network resources. Those resources include a virtual network, a subnet, and a public IP address. So let's get started on these pieces and then we'll move into the next piece. So let's get started on creating our virtual network. And this process that we're going to walk through here is actually going to involve a handful of steps. We're going to create the resource group. We'll then create the virtual network and the subnet. Then we'll walk through and create the public IP address. Once we have that stuff configured, we will actually then go in, and I touched on this earlier in the course, we'll actually go in and create a network security group and a network security group rule that applies to our network so we can kind of lock down uh, resources to specific uh, IP addresses or ranges or however we want to do it. So before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and get started on the network piece and then we'll, we'll visit the security piece later on in this lecture. So we're going to start with our resource group. So off screen, I have a PowerShell command I'm going to copy and paste into our PowerShell window here. And before I run it, I want to just briefly go over the pieces of it and kind of deconstruct it so you understand what it's doing. It's entirely too easy for me to just copy and paste a PowerShell and say, go ahead, run it. And that's great. You can go off and run it. But then you're wondering what, what is actually happening here. So in the interest of giving you an understanding of what things are doing here, let's look at this. Uh, you can see this command here is called new-azure rm resource group. The new Azure RM resource group is used in PowerShell to create a resource group. Now, we did uh, a resource group earlier on in this course through the actual portal. What we're going to do here is create a completely new resource group as part of this exercise so you can see how that works. So with the new Azure RM resource group, we define a name for our new resource group. And in this PowerShell command, we're calling it my new resource group. And for location, we're going to put this not in central U.S. this year, but in west U.S. So we go ahead and we click, we hit enter here, and you can see the result. Resource group name, my new resource group, tells me the location is west U.S. and that it succeeded, and it gives me my resource ID. Now, to confirm this in the portal, you could simply just go into the portal and take a look here. And you can see here, my new resource group. So at this point, we have our resource group provisioned through the actual uh, PowerShell interface. So now that we have our resource group defined and we have it provisioned, we're going to go ahead and deploy our virtual network. Now, deploying the virtual network is going to require 
a handful of commands here uh, that are moderately complex. Uh, we're basically going to create a subnet configuration, and then we're going to create a virtual network and reference that subnet configuration, and then we'll create a public IP address that we're going to use later on to actually attach to and manage our VM that we deploy. So let's go in here, and I'm going to go into my notepad here that's off screen, and I'm going to copy this very first command into my PowerShell screen. And it's a little more complex than the previous command we used to provision the resource group. So what you're seeing here is a command called new Azure RM virtual network, virtual network subnet config. And what we're doing is we're running this PowerShell command and taking that output and storing it in a variable called subnet config, which is denoted here by the dollar sign subnet config in green. What this new Azure RM virtual network subnet config does is create a new subnet called my subnet and it gives it an address range of 192.168.1.0/24. So this command is creating a subnet called my my new subnet with this address range and it's storing it in this subnet config variable. The next command we run is going to reference that, that variable. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And what it's done now, it, it doesn't give you a whole lot of feedback. If, if, if you don't get any feedback, you're probably good. The only feedback you're typically going to get is some kind of red error message. Red is bad. We, we don't have any of that, so we're good. So what we've done now is uh, stored our first subnet, and really the only subnet for this exercise, in this subnet config variable. The next command we run here, and as I'm speaking, I'm copying it from my notepad off screen, and we'll paste it in here. Now this command gets even a little more complex. Hey look, no one said PowerShell was pretty, okay? So, as we did in the previous command, we're running a PowerShell command and storing the result in another variable called dollar sign VNet. The command here we're running is called new Azure RM virtual network. Now we're using this command to actually create the virtual network. Now the virtual network we create is going to be stored in our resource group called my new resource group as denoted here in the command. It's going to be stored in the West US location as we did in our previous command. And we're going to call this virtual network my new VNet. And we're going to give the new virtual network a, uh, an address range, or an address space, I should say, of 192.168.0.0 slash 16. Now remember, earlier on in this course, we talked about the relationship between a virtual network and the subnets. Subnets must be addressed with ranges that are part of the address space of the virtual network to which they belong. So you can see here, when we defined our subnet, we gave it a 192.168.1.0 slash 24, which belongs to the overall address space of 192.168.0.0 slash 16. So we have our address space for our virtual network defined, and then we're going to call the subnet here at the end of this, and we're going to use the subnet config variable that we defined in the previous command. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. And the screen here, some of these PowerShell commands will, will give you this output type, uh, will be modified in a future release. It seems rather random. Basically, that's just a heads up saying, hey, at some point later on, we're probably going to change how you do this. At this point, this is how you do it, so you can just ignore it. And what it's going to do here is create the new virtual network in the resource group called My New Resource Group and it's going to assign this new subnet that we created to it. You can see here, again, there's no real output, but we'll go in and we'll refresh our new resource group, and you can see we now have our new virtual network called My New VNet, and when you click on the virtual network and go into subnets, you can see we also have My New Subnet of 192.168. 1.0 slash 24. So now what we've done 
is go in and deploy a virtual network that includes our subnet we're going to use. Now the last thing we're going to do from a network perspective is create a public IP address. We'll use that public IP address to access the virtual machine that we eventually spin up. So let's go ahead here and I'll copy this command from my notepad. And just as a side note, in the resources section, I'll have these commands for you already written up so you don't have to kind of guess what I'm doing here. So what's happening here? As you can see, again, we're referencing a, a variable called dollar sign pip, public IP. The command we're running and storing in that variable is called new Azure RM public IP address. Pretty self-explanatory. What we're doing is we're creating this public IP address. We're storing it in our my new resource group, giving it a, a location of West, and we're calling it my public DNS with a dollar sign get random uh, command. So basically what we're doing is we're just telling it generate a random IP or generate a public IP and give it a random DNS name that we can access it with. So we go ahead and we hit enter. And at this point, it's asking me, what's the allocation method? And I did this intentionally so you can see what happens. If you leave out a resource that you that is mandatory, it's going to come back and say, hey, I need this information. So the allocation method can either be dynamic or, or dynamic or static. We don't care what our public IP address is going to be for our virtual machine because we're going to reference it, reference it via DNS anyway. So let's just tell it's dynamic and we'll hit enter. And again, it's giving me the warning that this may change in a future release. And at this point, it's going through and provisioning the actual resource. And again, nothing really spectacular happens. My preference would be that it comes back and says, hey, it was successful. Instead, we only hear about it if it's a problem. So let's go out to our resource group and we'll confirm that we have a public IP. And here it's my public DNS and it gave it a random number. And if we click on it, we can go in and click configuration and we can see that it's dynamic. Now you can also see in the overview section that it hasn't been associated anywhere because it's giving me the, only the option to associate. We're going to associate this IP with our VM later on. At this point, we have the network pieces in place for the deployment of our VM that we'll do uh, in one of our next lectures. We're going to wrap it up here since it's been a pretty, pretty long lecture and move into the next lecture where we'll actually create the network security group and network security rules uh, for access to our environment. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you over in the next lecture.